quick. Think about something that happened in 2004. What came to mind? Facebook was new. Shrek 2 was in theaters. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for waiting. And some of us were probably playing the latest GTA game. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. But little did most of us know that the Hot Rod world was about to be rocked. We talk a lot about shows like Fast and Loud on this channel. But what if we told you there was a car show that was just as awe-inspiring years before Rawlings made deals with Discovery? What happened to the legendary American Hot Rod? And where are its cast members today? Welcome back to Tuna No Crust, YouTube's number one channel for everything you ever want to know about car TV shows. If you're not subscribed already, now's a great time to click that button. Let's take a ride down memory lane and find out what really happened to American Hot Rod. American Hot Rod set the stage for many hot rodding shows. Someone would make a custom order, and the show would document the shop's creative process. Because I'm always on the lookout for an old discarded car that I can bring back to life. If this car could talk, I bet it'd have some stories to tell. The main star, Boyd Coddington, had an eye for talent and only hired the best, so every car looked like a work of art by the time everything was done. As per usual, these cars had to be modified under strict deadlines. Notably, however, the series often had one car being modified over three to four episodes instead of one car in one episode. This allowed viewers to soak in the process and the drama going on in the shop. It went over really well. I think everybody loved the car. American Hot Rod was decently popular. It ran from 2004 to 2007 and had a total of five seasons. However, no matter how popular American Hot Rod was, it paled in comparison to American Chopper. Many fans at the time saw American Hot Rod as riding Chopper's tailpipes to popularity, but this didn't stop it from having a huge following. Despite this, the reviews of American Hot Rod aren't great. IMDb only gives the show a 5.6 out of 10. You either loved or hated Boyd's personality. He was frequently described as self-righteous and an a-hole. There was plenty of drama between the workers at the shop as they were doing their jobs. He is, I mean, he's a grown boy. He's going to have to make the decision. I mean, it's his future. And this is fine. one of the more chicken things that's ever happened to me in my life, Charlie. One of the more chicken things, okay? And you could squirm and derm or whatever you want. This is bullshit. But that drama also made it very fun to watch. Some people who claim to hate it in reviews curse themselves for becoming addicted. It's that kind of show. And if hearing about American Hot Rod gives you a sense of deja vu, you're right. This show is very similar to some of the others we cover on this channel. With that in mind, it also has some similar problems. We've done a few videos covering why some of the gas monkeys left Rawlings Garage. American Hot Rod also had a very high turnover rate. Even Boyd's son couldn't stay there. So even though the show has left the airwaves, it's still worth looking at some of the most important cast members, what they did on the show, and where they are today. Note that many faces came and went. We'll stick to the biggest names in the main crew for time's sake. The star of American Hot Rod was Boyd Coddington and his shop. With his over-the-top personality, supreme craftsmanship, and recognizable Hawaiian shirt, the guy seemed made for reality TV. But where did he come from? Some things about this legendary hot rodder might surprise you. Boyd Coddington was born in Rupert, Idaho on August 28, 1944. He was obsessed with car magazines and got his first car, a 1931 Chevrolet when he was only 13 years old. Aside from getting a car a little younger than he should have, Boyd took a traditional path to becoming a professional hot rodder. He went to a trade school, did a three-year apprenticeship, and got a job as a mechanic for Disneyland in Anaheim, California. He was a hot rodder by day and a mechanic by night. Boyd would go on to revolutionize hot rodding as we know it. Along with some jaw-droppingly gorgeous designs, he invented custom wheels known as Billet. If they couldn't find a part they needed, they made one from aluminum on the spot. Not only did the cars look amazing, but many of the parts were 100% unique. However, it is worth noting that Boyd was not the most faithful lover. He had three wives in total and five children between them. Boyd's relationships could almost be another video, so let's get back to his true love, owning a hot rod garage. Boyd finally opened his shop, Hot Rods by Boyd, in 1977 in Stanton, California. 
Boyd's shop had financial problems before, during, and after the show. There was a 2005 case where he tried to bill his cars as antique cars instead of custom vehicles when filing his taxes, for example. But whenever the tax man kicked him down, Boyd would get back up. In his own words, a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Boyd Coddington set the gold standard not just for car shows, but for hot rodding as a hobby. He made almost every custom part himself. Again, we could do a video just about Boyd. Let us know if you'd like to see that in the comments. Unfortunately, Boyd died suddenly in 2008. He had been in surgery for a perforated colon and kidney issues. Even if the show had plans for another season, it could not continue without Boyd, whether you loved or loathed him. Rest in peace. Hot Rods by Boyd lived a little longer, but not by much. Even after changing owners, it closed its doors for good in 2014. Boyd had been the heart and soul of the show, so even if it had continued without him, it would not have been the same. Joe Coddington, his third wife, also helped on the show, but not in the same capacity as some of the other family members we have talked about. Instead of getting down and dirty, she focused on the corporate side of the shop. Boyd's ex-wife, Diane, and his son, Chris, also helped run the accounting and custom wheel departments, respectively. Dwayne Mayer might have had the second most controversial personality on American Hot Rod. He was the shop manager until the show ended and appeared in all five seasons. He was in love with Boyd's work. They met when he couldn't stop asking about a certain truck. After surviving a dangerous car accident in 2016, Mayer now runs his own shop. Chad Geary, aka Blue Bear, aka BB, may have been Boyd's biggest mistake on the show. He was fired in episode 6 of season 2 when building a rat rod against Boyd's orders. Yeah, I told Mike to stop. I said, Mike, You're not Mike's boss, I'm Mike's that's boss. That's my frame. I don't give a sh I don't care who the boss is. That's mine. It's not yours to do that to. Many fans think BB lacked the relative skill and maturity to work at the shop. Nobody seemed to know where he is today. Chip Foose from Overhaulin also got his start on American Hot Rod. We've done a video or two on him and his show before. Without repeating too much, Foose was an artist but eventually became the president of Coddington's company. Despite his name not being anywhere near them, Foose designed the Boydster and Boydster 2. But there was friction between the Boyd and Foose. Along with small creative differences, it happens, one of Boyd's bankruptcies involved some of Foose's work. There were also issues with Mike Curtis working as a double agent between Boyd and Foose. Despite splitting before American Hot Rod had ended, Foose had no bad blood with Boyd. An interview describes Boyd as a second father to him. After Boyd's passing, Foose said that he appreciated all the opportunities that working with Boyd had given him. Even after both shows left the air, Foose continued to work on cars. If you're a real fan of Overhaulin', check out the design gallery on Chip Foose's website. Chip Foose took Charlie Hutton with him. Hutton had a dramatic on-screen departure in Season 2, Episode 10 of American Hot Rod, which featured a 42 Woody. Okay. I told you, and you don't f believe me, you're going to have to learn the hard way like everybody else, okay? And I will and you need to leave way. right now because I don't give a shit about what's going on, okay? okay? After working on Overhaulin', Hutton struck out on his own. He currently runs his own restoration shop, Color Studio, in Nampa, Idaho. Mike Curtis appears in almost every episode of American Hot Rod, but some sites don't list him as part of the cast. That's a shame. He showed up for more episodes than Boyd did if IMDb is right. His firing was a tough moment for everyone else at the shop. Curtis wished he had left on better terms, but things were not working out. But this did not stop Curtis from doing what he loved. Today, he still runs Mike Curtis Design, which specializes in one-off wheels and parts. His credits include the NHRA, Patton Racing Team, Scott Palmer Racing, and Lindbergh Brothers Motorsports. He maintains contact with Chip Foose. Jesse James of Monster Garage fame also got his start on American Hot Rod. We've talked about him before, so this'll be brief. He still manages the West Coast Choppers IP and Jesse James Firearms Unlimited. Finally, if you're curious about the announcer, Mike Rowe continues to host and narrate various Discovery shows. If you hear a familiar voice on TV, it may not be a coincidence. Even if the show has no hope of coming back, American Hot Rod left its mark on the automotive world. Many amateur hot rodders got into the hobby thanks to Boyd. 
And, of course, it really got things rolling for Discovery's future as the home of car-centered reality TV shows. Even though American Hot Rod might not be the best car show to ever hit the airwaves, it remains one of the most important to hot rodding as a hobby and continues to influence the automotive industry to this day. What were you doing when the show first aired in 2004? Next year, it'll be vintage. Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss the next upload. See you on the road.